Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Oxhorn and welcome to my player home picks. This is the series where we go over some of the best player home mods for people who want a place of their own but really don't want to sit down and build a settlement. This series is all about the best player home mods that are move in ready, already decorated, and that already feel like home. This episode is an Xbox special. Every single mod I talk about in this video today is on the Xbox as well as the PC. Check the description of this video where I provide links. First on the list today is USS Quincy Minuteman Player Home by Alksram. If you walk south from the Warwick Homestead, you see a huge fire in the distance. Getting close, you find what appears to be a crashed ship under attack by pirates. The pirate gang is led by the fearsome Barbarossa, who at even my level of 171 had a big skull by his name, so prepare for a tough fight. After defeating the pirates, you can walk around topside and talk with the survivors. The ship appears to be a well-defended Miniman camp. All the NPCs are named and some of them have unique dialogue. Hey, looking to trade? What's the news around here? Got work to do. Can't talk now. Huh. If you work, you eat. It's as simple as that. If you're here to trade, let's trade. You can climb the masts to get to the crow's nest, which give you a great 360 view of the surrounding areas. The inside is very well decorated. Outside the captain's quarters, there's what appears to be a Minuteman mm -hmm. war room yes. where we find Jane Percival looking at a map. There's also a guard gorilla walking around, which seems a little odd for a Minuteman-themed player home, but there are also terminals everywhere that give you more backstory on the ship. You can find out the personal details of every single named Minuteman on board. Nearby, we find the body of Lyman Amsden with a note stabbed into his chest. Apparently, he was a warning from the fearsome Barbarossa. Thankfully, he won't be bothering the Minutemen ever again. Behind the red door is the captain's quarters. You've got a bobblehead stand, your own bed, a desk, a safe, a trunk, and a terminal. The terminal gives you more backstory and also gives you some details about the mod. It also taunts you by telling you that there are three unique legendary weapons aboard. I was only able to find two. In the middle of the first floor, we find the brig. A doctor is attending to a captured pirate who looks wounded. It's good to know that the Minutemen don't simply execute everybody. And the doctor can be interacted with and works as an actual doctor. Any news out there, doctor? Been out of the loop. A lot of sick and injured taking up my time. Now, if you need treatment, let me know. Many of the named NPCs aboard the ship are actually weapon merchants, armor merchants, food merchants, and doctors. There's lots of wonderful decoration and attention to detail on the first floor that really makes this ship feel that it's been lived in for many months or even years. Chems all over the place, empty beer bottles, destroyed exercise equipment, and lots of crates. There's also better lighting on the interior if you want. There are red switches on every floor. Simply flip a switch and the lights go on. And here's a nice touch. The cannons actually work. I went around the top deck firing every single cannon, hoping something unique would happen, but looks like there's no script associated with it. Down to the second floor, we find crew quarters, lots of lockers, and then a couple of bedrooms with some cots and apparently a motorcycle, because everyone knows the first thing you need on a ship is a motorcycle. In one of these lockers, we find the first legendary item, the Fury, a legendary revolutionary sword that increases damage after each consecutive hit on the same target. Towards the middle of the second floor, we find a lounge area complete with a billiard table, a terminal where you can play video games, and a lounge area with plenty of seating. Towards the back of the ship, we find the canteen with the food merchant. There are some tables bedecked with all sorts of decorations, and you can chat with more of the crew. In the very back, we find the kitchen and the larder. Down to the third floor, and we find storage. Here's where a lot of the workbenches are stored, and man, is it decorated really well. In the very back, we find the red workshop. Activating it gives you access to the player home, and you can build to your heart's desire. You can scrap absolutely everything. You can scrap all of the decorations. You can scrap some of the interior walls. You can even scrap the Minutemen. Yeah, 
it, it gives you like bone and leather if you scrap the people. Uh, you can kill everybody aboard as well, and they don't respawn. The Minutemen topside can be killed too, however they do respawn after about a week. I found this emergency alarm and I pressed it, but uh, it didn't really do anything. The siren ran off, but the Minutemen just sort of walked around casually. Not sure what that was all about. Bottom floor has a lab terminal, plenty of containers for all sorts of storage, a power armor, repair workstation, many other terminals that give added backstory, and the lavatory. You also find more beds for everybody, including what appears to be a child's bed, which might, I don't know, work for a certain synth boy. There are two bilges on the ship, the bow bilge, which doesn't really have anything in it, and the stern bilge, the stern bilge is where you find the second legendary item in a locked safe. It's called the Pounder. It's a portable cannon that shoots an additional projectile. Ouch. Like I said, I couldn't find the third legendary weapon, so if you guys download the mod and if you find the third one, let me know. I'm curious. You can't build a settlement recruitment beacon, so this is a player home only. It can never be a settlement. The interior comes with ambient energy, so you don't have to place a bunch of conduits everywhere. And it also comes with electric switch boxes, which generate power so that you can hook up wired devices like construction lights. What a cool mod, ladies and gentlemen. Not just for somebody who's doing a Minuteman run through, but in general, it's just really nifty. It's got everything. It's got an attack, it's got pirates, it's got named Minutemen, it's got backstories, it's got it's got walking gorillas, legendary weapons, and it's completely decorated. The time and attention that went into this mod is astounding, and I gotta hand it to the mod author for making something truly epic. As I said at the beginning, this mod is available on both the Xbox One and the PC, and you can find links to them on both Bethesda.net and the Nexus in the description. Next up is Outfield Retreat, Diamond City RV Player Home, by none other than Eleonora. Outfield Retreat is a nice and compact player home in Diamond City. This is for a player who truly wants a hands-off player home experience. You don't want to build anything, you just want something beautiful and functional that you can move right into. On the outside, she has it beautifully decorated up with a variety of garden gnomes, a mailbox, a suit of Nuka-Cola power armor giving the thumbs up, a patio with some Nuka-Cola and a grill for grilling up some foods, and around the corner is an outhouse. That's right, she spared no expense to make sure that you had all the amenities you need. The lights glow from the windows all around the RV, making it look spectacular at night. There's also a handy power armor station just outside. On the inside, we find a cramped but cozy player home that has become familiar with many of Eleonora's mods. The filled buckets actually work like functioning containers that you can use to store your items. They not only look good, but they're functional. She has resized some of the items in Fallout 4 to fit inside this player home. Check out this tiny safe and the tiny trunk at the top shelf. She even has a tiny Nuka Girl model wearing the Nuka Girl costume riding a Nuka World rocket hanging from the ceiling. I thought that was a nice touch. The Soul Survivor's bed is on the far end of the RV, bedecked with a variety of red pillows, including a Nuka Girl pillow, a Vault 111 storage chest, which is fitting, and even a bobblehead shelf. You get your own player terminal, and another itty bitty chest on top of your desk. And around the corner, we have a couple of working armor racks, one male and one female. They work just like other regular armor racks in the game. Put on a costume, equip it, and you're good to go. Because of things like this, the mod does require the DLCs in order to function, but she has a version that does not require the DLCs in case you only have the vanilla Fallout 4. She has more shelving up top for your armor, hanging flags waving in the breeze, I guess? And then some compact armor stations, which I actually just reviewed in a different video. These crafting stations are courtesy of Fading Signal. He makes some amazing mods, and he gave her permission to go ahead and use them in her player home. And they all work, complete with animations. 
On the other end of the trailer, she has a nice kitchen area filled with all sorts of goodies, including utensils, dishware, food, gotta have the sweet rolls, and a working cooking station on what appears to be a completely unique range. I haven't seen that in the game before. She's got a filled refrigerator, a chemistry station in the corner, complete with a periodic table of the elements chart, and Nuka World souvenirs hugging the railing. Eleonora is queen of decorations. She really knows how to make a place look lived in, to make a place look like a home. If you're looking for something nice and compact, move-in ready and convenient in the heart of Diamond City, this mod is for you. Next on the list is Cambridge Player Home Slash Settlement by Jay Pittner. You can find it here on the map. There's an icon that appears that's called uh, Cambridge Home. It's east of the Cambridge Police Station, just north of the Cambridge Campus Diner, uh, which, which is down over there, I think. Anyway, here it is. It's got a beautiful exterior. It really looks like a regal home. And this is the polar opposite of the last mod I talked about. Hold on. Sorry there, had to take care of some business. This is a rather dangerous area. Ah! Well, that's what I get for uh, making the Brotherhood of Steel angry. Three paladins out of nowhere, and this one isn't even done yet. Goodness gracious me. You might want to stay down there, lady. Goodness gracious. <clears throat> wow, that was an unnecessary interruption. And look what they did to the exterior of my home. Oh man, big old divots in the concrete. That's a bummer. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a beautiful exterior to this player home. And it's the complete polar opposite of the RV that we looked at. While the last one was extremely compact, meant for one person, this is a sprawling house. You'll see when we get on the inside. And it works as a settlement. Let's go ahead and take a look. You should recognize the inside of this player home because it's based on the Cabot House. This is where we had our grand audience with the Cabot family. Uh, this upstairs portion is sparsely decorated, which works basically as a blank canvas, so you can do pretty much anything you want. Some of these paintings can be scrapped, and others can't. I tried to mark them with uh, another painting. Here we go. I put two paintings over these two just to point out the ones that can't be scrapped. But here, I'll give you the grand tour. So coming on in here, this doorway leads down to the basement, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this living room area has got a billiard table, a lounge area down over here. All of this can be scrapped and rebuilt if you want. And then coming in on in here, this is a side door that leads out to Cambridge. Here we've got what appears to be a bathroom, sparsely decorated bathroom. And then here is the grand dining area with three places set. But you, of course, can build this out to be whatever you want. It's more of an elegant house, I've found. It's... It's if you want something that's really the polar opposite of the uh, the last mod that I reviewed. It's not compact. It's big. It's sprawling. It gives you lots of room to decorate up as you want. Coming upstairs, here's uh, this leads out to the hallway. This is the stairway that came down there. So these connect here. And then this goes on into a big open room. It's big and open. No decorations here. You can decorate it up as you please. Going up even further... We find another long hallway. Here I 
Uh, here are two more paintings that you cannot scrap for some reason. I covered it up to uh, point that out. Here's another one that you couldn't scrap. And then over in here, this leads back down to this stairwell, which goes down to that blank room that we showed you just earlier. And then uh, here are some other primary bedrooms. Here's the master bedroom with nice windows with beautiful light coming in here. Look how the shadows work. The light coming in from the windows cast beautiful shadows on the floor. But uh, again, it's sparsely decorated. This is your canvas. You're going to have to make it your own. Coming on in here, here's another bedroom. This could be good for some companions or settlers if you want. And then a third bedroom, maybe a child's bedroom right here. So that's the entire upstairs. And then there's this, which scared me at first, a, a big mannequin sitting right in the middle of this, uh, this hallway. And uh, then you've got the stairs which bring you on down. And we can now go and explore the basement. It's easy to get turned around in here. I'm already a little lost. Um, this way, right? Yeah. All right, so here's how you get to the basement. So the basement comes on down here, and this is what's really cool about this settlement. Look at this. It opens up into this huge warehouse area. This is just enormous. Like I said, it's just so different from the last mod we talked about. Um, he's got this already decorated up with a bunch of containers that you can use to organize your explosives, your ammunition, if you want to have your ammunition nicely organized. Um, this is actually a container. You can store your pistols in this container, shotguns in this container. Really handy if you kind of want to get OCD about organizing your weapons. Here's a unique and legendary weapons container. And these are all containers as well. We've got armor, personal gear, unique gear, more. Here's one just for fusion cores. Oh, wow, the mod comes with 50 fusion cores. Okay, that's a bit of a cheat, but uh, <laughs> still pretty cool. And check out all of these power armor stations. He even includes two X01 suits of power armor for your convenience, and you can store all of your power armor here. Now, these are not permanent. You can scrap them if you want. So here we go. I can just get rid of these if I want them to be gone. That way you can really make this warehouse slash display area really yours. But then there's this other door which opens up into the kitchen area. This is where you can build a big kitchen for yourself and your settlers. And I do mean settlers because unlike the other mods I talked about, this is more than just a player home. You can build a recruitment beacon. I don't have the necessary copper, steel, crystal, or supplies in my inventory to build it, but as you can see, you can build a recruitment radio beacon, which means you can turn this into a fully-fledged settlement if you want. Uh, it already comes with a kitchen already laid out. You're going to want to decorate this up. Put some shelves over here, decorate them up with food and all sorts of other doodads and gadgets to make it really look lived in. And this leads down to one of my favorite things, which is not only the workshop, but the pool it comes with a built-in pool you don't have to build your own and it's got clean water that's what's really nice about it when i tried to build my own pool in vault 88 the water was green and sickly but this water is nice and blue so you could build a nice relaxation area here for your settlers or you can tour this entire place for yourself if you want it there's no obligation to turn this into a settlement if you don't want. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, three completely different player home mods that work for both the Xbox and the PC. When mods come out for the PS4, I am sure there are going to be a plethora of wonderful uh, player homes available for the PS4. And when they arrive, I will be sure to review the very best ones here on this channel. Well, there you go. I hope you liked it. Please remember that I've got the links to all of these mods in the description of this video, both Xbox and PC, if you want to download them and install them in your own game. Endorse the mod author if you like their mods, and be sure to subscribe for more Fallout 4 and Fallout 4 mod videos like this one. If you want to support me on Patreon, I'm going to greatly appreciate it. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching.